All right, very good. This is Catholic Answers Live. It's 21 after the hour. Our guest is Dr. Edward Fazer. We're deconstructing atheism, and now we're going to Sean in Washington, D.C. I think you're in Washington. Sean, am I right on the locale? Uh, that's where I'm based is Washington, D.C. I'm actually headed there tomorrow. Okay, but, uh, very good. Yeah. We're, we're delighted you and, called. I, just to set listeners up who didn't hear the, the top of the show, I did receive an email today from uh, from Dr. Dawkins in England. Apparently he's going to be getting his beauty sleep, but uh, we thank you for uh, not speaking in his stead, but at least uh, picking up the baton. So welcome. Yeah, I'm Director of Strategy and Policy for the Richard Dawkins Foundation U.S. I'm author of a book called Attack of the Theocrats, How the Religious Right Harms Us All and What We Can Do About It. Mm -hmm. uh, if I might, um, and I am a an attorney, not a philosopher, but I did object to a couple comments I heard as I was as I was waiting here. Um, one was the view of uh, non-religious people as somehow being mechanistic or wrathful, and then I uh, I think one of you talked about how the way people who are non-religious live is somehow because they're feeling guilty about something, I gather, uh, is why they're uh, not theistic. Well, I went to the University of Notre Dame, a graduate of the University of Notre Dame, and very much enjoyed my education. In fact, uh, became more confirmed in, in my lack of belief by a nun who taught a New Testament course there and showed many, many contradictions within the New Testament. Um, I'm a very uh, happy person. Most of my friends who are non-religious are happy. I consider most of my friends who are religious happy. I just don't buy Sean, the argument. Do you have, do, do you have a question for thought. Dr. Fazer? I'm, I'm enjoying the background from a bi biographical point of view, but what would your question be for Dr. Fazer today? Well, uh, no, I want to clarify because we were characterized as somehow viewing things as mechanistic or wrathful. It's simply not true. Uh, it's an embracing worldview in religion, uh, in, in a, a non-religious worldview. I don't have any hostility to religious people, and I would prefer that I not be characterized in absentia or anybody else who's not religious be characterized in absentia. I'm happy about life. That's why I'm not religious. Isn't, to be fair, though, isn't the title of your book um, uh, premised that, that theocrats somehow want to harm you and me and what we should all be doing about it? Oh, in fact, that they have. Uh, it's not an abstraction. It's not a philosophical abstraction. It's a legal reality where there's a number of laws in America right. that hurt people and hurt average people, whether you're talking about children, where in several states child cares are exempted, uh, faith healing laws are permitted that give separate standards, and children are harmed. Right. I hear so, you, I just, I just want to. I just, I, just, I, just, I thought you said at the t you said at the top of the call that you don't have anything against religious people. I'm just trying to see which is the dominant um, fact here. But do you have a question for Dr. Fazer? Well, I'd encourage, Dr. Fear, my question is that how about we discuss this issue uh, from the perspective of, of actual non-religious people rather than using straw men, as I, as I heard in the introduction, about wrathful people or, you know, people who view the world as mechanistic. That's not my view at all. It's not Richard Dawkins' view at all. He thinks the world's a wonderful place, and it's, it's a mischaracterization of our worldview. Well, let me just take one very quick caveat um, opportunity, Sean. I didn't say that that atheists were wrathful, and we were really talking about principles believed by most atheists, not the individuals themselves. Is that a fair beginning to a reply, Dr. Fazer? Well, since you're the guest, go ahead. Yeah, well, um, speaking for myself, I, I certainly didn't say, in fact, I deny that every atheist is, uh, is motivated by ill will. Uh, I was an atheist myself. I think I had my you know, jerk-like moments as an atheist, but I don't think I was always motivated by Ill, Ill will. And um, I think I was certainly at some point in my career as an atheist open to the arguments from the other side, as is evidenced by the fact that I was ultimately convinced by them, and I came around to where I am now. But in any event, I wouldn't say every atheist uh, is motiva motivated by ill will or a bad person or anything like that. I've, I've had, I have a number of readers who are atheists who read my blog or who've read my books and who've given me some very valuable feedback. I've gotten into very uh, useful exchanges with them, and they're... they're uh, fair-minded people, a lot of them. There are atheists, however, who are not that way, and I think the new atheist phenomenon is regrettable precisely because it's, uh, it's put the sort of loudmouth ignoramus atheist as the public face of atheism, and I would, uh, I would put that uh, label on Richard Dawkins. The fact that Richard Dawkins will not debate people uh, like William Lane Craig, um, people who disagree with him, people who have been able to expose the, the errors in his book, William and I expose Lane them in, Craig, I expose them in my book. If yes. I could interject, William Lane Craig has himself justified portions of the Bible that include genocide. Uh, we come from a very gentle... What, what does that have to do with Sean, whether or not you yeah, debate Dawkins? Hmm. 
That, that's I, not I something well, that I think a lot of, if I could complete my thought, that a lot of religious people who I agree with on this point uh, would find moral. It's immoral. Uh, I, and if I could ask a question, I, I did uh, disagree with your characterization. You somehow rejected deism, which would be a philosophy that was um, discussed by people like Thomas Jefferson, I think the Jewish religious viewpoint, the Buddhist religious viewpoint. I question why you would place Catholicism, other than based upon bias, above other uh, religious viewpoints. It Sean, if, you, if you're willing to stick around through the next break, I'd love to keep you on for part two. Can you got a few moments, Sean? Sure. Yes. All right, great. This is Catholic Answers Live. Dr. Ed Fazer, Deconstructing Atheism, 888 truth After this uh, brief break, we will be back. Don't go away. If you don't call with your questions, you can't get Catholic Answers Live. In the dog-eat-dog world of print publications, it's rare for a magazine to survive for any length of time, let alone almost three decades. But we're proud to say that our award-winning Catholic Answers magazine has been thriving for that long. And today, it's better than ever. Now, through the end of the year, you can subscribe for a special low price. It's part of our gigantic sale, which features reduced prices on everything we sell. Call 888-291-8000 or log on to Catholic.com to sign up today. Catholic Answers Magazine remains true to its apologetics roots, offering shorter articles for busy people like you. Feature stories marked by level of difficulty, contemporary art and photos, links to related material on our website, and much more. Subscribe today while Catholic Answers Magazine and everything else in our store is on sale through the end of the year. It'll make a perfect gift for priests, deacons, religious educators, family members, or friends. Log on now to Catholic.com or phone 888-291-8000. Did you know that all of the books, DVDs, and CDs that Catholic Answers publishes can be found as close as your neighborhood Catholic bookstore? Catholic Answers partners with hundreds of Catholic bookstores across the nation and the world to bring you quality resources in the areas of apologetics, evangelization, and chastity from a name you know you can trust. So stop on in and give your local bookstore a visit and see what they've got that's new from Catholic Answers. You can also find us online at Catholic.com. Catholic Answers, the most trusted name in Catholic apologetics. Welcome back to Catholic Answers Live, where Jesus Christ is Lord. Benedict XVI is his vicar, and your questions reign supreme. One of the great things to me about being a Catholic lover of Jesus Christ is that you have the sure and certain knowledge that God loves us and there's nothing we can do about it. We're talking with Dr. Ed Fazer about uh, the New Atheism, uh, his book, The Last Superstition, I highly recommend. And uh, before the break, we were speaking with Sean, and uh, Sean's from the Richard Dawkins Foundation, based in Washington. Sean, um, do you want to sort of quickly review what you were, what the gist was? Or Dr. Fazer, do you want to pick it up? Well, I'm happy to pick it up. I, uh, I wanted to make the point, and I wanted to stay on the point, because I think uh, Sean was getting off of it, that um, I'm happy to acknowledge that there are atheists of, uh, of goodwill. There are serious atheists that uh, Christians and other theists ought to engage and take seriously. And I uh, have to say, though, that Richard Dawkins is not one of them. Now, I've shown my book, many other people have shown, that when it comes to among many other things, the classical arguments for God's existence, the arguments of Thomas Aquinas, for example. Dawkins simply doesn't know what he's talking about. He hasn't done his homework. And um, if Dawkins had reason for believing otherwise, and if he was confident that he knew what he was talking about when he attacks a writer like Aquinas, I don't see why he won't debate prominent, serious debaters like a William Lane Craig, who's a noted uh, Christian philosopher, um, if Dawkins is so confident that he has torpedoed the classic arguments for God's existence, why won't he debate someone like uh, a Craig? Why won't he debate other people? The fact well, that he yeah. won't, to me, is, is, I, is clear evidence that he, he doesn't know what he's talking about, and he doesn't want to be exposed as not knowing what he's talking about. And so that's evidence to me of a lack of goodwill, a lack of seriousness. Sean? Well, if I could respond on a couple points. One, I don't think it shows much goodwill 
to dismiss uh, Judaism or Buddhism or Deism. Sean, as, do you, Sean, do you want to reply to what Ed just said? No, I would like to raise a question, and then I will return to the other point. Um, that I have apparently more respect for these other religions than you folks do. I mean, as a non-religious person myself, I see no reason, none, zero, why we would place Catholicism as a graduate of the University of Notre Dame ab- above Judaism or Buddhism or a deist worldview. They're equally logical. Furthermore, I would say that as far as William Lake Craig is concerned, there are passages he's written about them where he says he justifies uh, Old Testament genocide, uh, a lot of religious people completely reject that as an immoral world stance. Sean, I, uh, I'm not a Latinist, but I'm sure there's a fallacy for what you're doing. You're, I've asked you twice now to respond to what Dr. Fazer said, and you keep I, going I down. I am down. responding. These I are, am responding. Well, they sound an awful lot like red herring uh, rabbit. No, I don't think it's... I wouldn't get on the stage with someone who advocates for things that say it's morally justified. Uh, well, I don't know why not. It'd be easy to refute them, wouldn't it? If it's so, if, if so why is he bothered? So with the, do you think that William Lane Craig is someone that uh, his moral worldview is is one that's worthy of my certainly not worthy of my time? I mean, in, in my non-religious worldview and the one espoused by Richard Dawkins, we're talking about how to make the world a more gentle and caring place. Not when we sit around trying to debate whether genocide is justified. It's obviously not. And I would like a response to my question about your characterization of why Catholicism would stand above Judaism or Buddhism or Deism or any other religion. Hey, Sean, I'd say that the, not, the scientific philosophy yeah. is one you need to answer, but let's answer also why superior to these other religions. That would take us in a pendulum swing way off our topic, and we only have an hour, Sean. I hope you understand that uh, Well, that part of it. to me, I, I yeah. think it's a red herring to not address a fundamental issue. Who's, who's not I'd addressing them? Question. I would like to know your response. You know, so do you, do you want do you want a two minute summary of of what I would say about Judaism and Buddhism and Islam and so forth? I mean, is that really what you're asking for? Yeah, that's it, our my thesis and assertion to you, and I'd like a response. Is that those are equally credible? The reason folks in India are predominantly Hindu is because of demographics, not because of any greater logic or lesser logic. And the same uh, with people who adhere to uh, Catholicism or any other religion. Uh, there's you, no greater logic. Can I respond to that? If you're saying they're equally credible in the sense that they all have serious philosophical arguments in their favor that ought to be answered, then I agree with that. I would be the, I would, I would be the first to uh, agree with that. Um, it doesn't follow that the arguments can't be answered. Now, each of those is a, a book of its own. You know, uh, Why Catholicism rather than Judaism? Why Catholicism rather than Hinduism? Very good question. Lots of people have written a lot on that. Um, if you want a reading list, I can give it to you. But to pretend that somehow... I, you know, I or anyone else is simply ignoring these religions and has nothing to say to the arguments in their favor. It's simply false. I mean, read, uh, read I Thomas add, Aquinas, just, just to take the most obvious a, example. A further question that from my worldview, where we want to include and accept everyone, including gay people, including given, giving women equal rights, which unfortunately the Catholic Church has hey, Sean, chosen not to Sean, do. Sean, I, wanna, I, just, our I have to take a, I have to take a, a gentle um, uh, chainsaw to your... Uh, soapbox. This is not the time to chase down all kinds of issues that we do all the time on the show. Um, we're sticking to the to the well, uh, topic of atheism. Well, this is my first time yeah. talking on the show, and to me, it's a fundamental question: is is the non-religious worldview <clears throat> is one of inclusion and caring for gay people and others, and the worldview that you folks espouse when we get down to the real world is one that says we will exclude various categories of people. I just don't think that's moral. Do Catholic, I, the, does the Catholic Church exclude groups of people, Dr. Fazer? Uh, no, that's the short answer. What about gay people and, <laughs> uh, and the priesthood? Sean, can, can, you, um, can you differentiate between person and behavior? Well, that sounds a little bit condescending. I think that folks that uh, are gay should be free to marry and make love to whom they choose without my interference. And your proof... I, and your, I'm, still, I'm yeah. still waiting to hear a question that hasn't been begged. I mean, every one of these is a, is a sheer assertion. And, of course, you know there are arguments. Well, let's hear every, your assertion to the contrary. Why should we not be marrying gay people uh, under American civil law? Sean, 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 we, we tackle gay marriage and the homosexualist movement and the dignity that every uh, person afflicted with same-sex attraction suffers. Uh, we think everyone has equal dignity here on Catholic Answers Live. And if you go to our uh, podcast archive, you can well, find many different treatments of it. We're not going to go after that today because but Dr. It seems Dr. Like Dr. Every Fazer time has I asked you questions, you're just not a answering. a valid point, 
I raise a valid point about why one should be non-religious. Uh, you say it's a side issue. I say it's a central issue and that it should be addressed. I should be answered. Why does that, Richard that Dawkins is, Richard Dawkins believes that myself and Dr. Fazer and John Paul II and Mother Teresa are hallucinating? That doesn't sound like a very gentle thing to say to someone. What I believe and what my conversations with Richard Dawkins indicate is that we believe in a world based upon evidence. Uh, there is no uh, personal hostility uh, to any individual. However, what I am hostile toward is a, any philosophy, uh, regardless of the motivation, uh, supernatural otherwise, that would say with no evidentiary basis that we're going to say that gay people uh, should not be able to live their life as they choose with recognition of law, that women should not be treated equally in mm -hmm. all realms. And the Catholic Church takes a different viewpoint from that. They also uh, would restrict a woman's right to choose. I agree with President John F. Kennedy in support of a woman's right to choose uh, with regard to abortion. So these okay, are so, all... Okay, so you're pro-gay and pro-abortion and anti-Catholic Church. We get that. Uh, what no, was I, don't your, what, that, I don't, I don't think yeah. that's anti-Catholic Church. There are lots of pro-choice Catholics. In fact, in America... A lot of Catholics are, uh, maybe even the majority, are, are on my side, certainly on contraception. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I wrote a whole book on it, and that's what otherwise is known as a scandal. We just heard from a Jesuit-educated educated atheist from Paris. We had a Notre Dame educated on now. You're saying it's a scandal uh, is, if people use contraception and they're Catholic? I do, yes. Well, yeah. but I disagree with you morally. I think that position is an so, immoral view, nothing do you, personal. Do you, so do you, I, think no, it's I, an I understand. I'm not, I don't take it as a hostile question. So you think we're wrong? I don't even, I, I go beyond, I will be very blunt, I go beyond thinking you're wrong. I mm -hmm. think that it is a moral imperative uh, that and in a compassionate world that helps those who are most suffering that yeah. we should have contraception. Why is it, is it a moral why is, imperative? Why is it better to have a world of compassion than a world with no compassion? Where, do you, where are you getting the, this, this concept? You're, 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 you're invoking, Sean, you're, you're invoking the concept of wrong. And I'd like and moral imperative. I'd just like to know what the foundation exactly. for that is with no God. Our reason, our sense of compassion and reason for our fellow human beings, well, and that's why we embrace uh, gay people. Why we embrace contraception. We believe in a reasoned worldview, and in that right. reasoned worldview, women control their own bodies, and they choose when and if uh, they're going to become pregnant. And we make sure that diseases are not transferred uh, in sexual activity, and pregnancy is planned. Yeah, she, it's a compassion. Sean, um, the show is advertised as deconstructing atheism, and you've listed uh, your gripes against the Catholic Church. I'm not sure how the uh, A dot no, can connect with the B dot. Are, when I believe in my beliefs about morality, which are very much tied to my non-religious worldview, are trying to bring you to the day-to-day -day real world, day-to-day -day real world choices. That's how we should make reasoned decisions. I find, with all due respect, the concept that we would oppose contraception to be a deeply immoral concept based on the real life and reasoning we have to deal with in the real world. Well, Sean, and I'm, so that is not uh, distinct from my non-religious worldview. It is essential to it. Uh, Dr. Fazer. Well, we've covered a lot of topics here, but none of them really address the question that I, I raised to Sean in the beginning, which is if, if Professor Dawkins knows what he's talking about, why will he not engage serious scholars on the other side in public debate? Christopher Hitchens he will do it. Debated He's debated both. Craig. Excuse me. Excuse me. You just filibustered for the last 10 minutes. Let me get a word in edgewise here. Christopher Hitchens has debated William Lane Craig. Um, Stephen Law has debated. Another prominent atheist has debated Craig uh, recently. Dawkins will not do it. Now, if his arguments are so powerful, if the evidence and uh, if reason is so compellingly on the side of atheism, why will Dawkins not face his critics in public and open debate? Sean. He's debated numerous religious people, so that's not really an issue. You're, you're creating well, I don't know. If, I mean, if he's premise. debated Pastor Bob at the local Baptist church, maybe he's done that. But why won't he face someone his own size? The Archbishop of York, uh, people who are more prominent. Yeah, why are you such some, an adherent? William is, Lane Craig hmm. isn't a Catholic, is he? Is he superior to No, Catholic? he's not. The reason I bring Craig up, though, is because... The, the fundamental issues we're discussing, and certainly the one we're discussing today... To me, like, this right, is, is a first Sean, can, can Please, let me finish, finish, let me finish, finish my the, point. Hmm. The fundamental issue we're here is this, uh, that, that we're discussing is atheism versus theism. It's a philosophical question about whether the existence of God can be proved. Now, if Dawkins knows what he's talking about on that issue, he should be willing to debate someone who is an expert on that issue in the philosophy of religion, on the philosophical arguments for God's existence. Now, Craig is just one of several people. I mention him because it's... 
it's a rather telling point that he will not de uh, debate Craig publicly. But Craig is someone who knows what he's talking about on that issue. That's why I bring him up. And this is not a Protestant Catholic thing. This is just a theism versus atheism thing. Yeah. So if Dawkins knows what he's talking about when he dismisses writers like Aquinas, and he doesn't know what he's talking about, as I show in my own book, but if he did, then he would be willing, I put it to you, he'd be willing to debate someone like a Craig publicly. If the evidence is on his side, if reason is on his side, he should be easily able to dispatch someone like a Craig or some other uh, prominent philosopher of religion who's an expert on the question of the arguments for God's existence, and yet he won't. Why? Yeah, Sean, we, we gotta, we're real way late on our third break. I've, I've had you on for six or seven times longer than most callers. I thank you for the call. That was Sean Faircloth, ladies and gentlemen, author of Attack of the Theocrats and um, the Director of Strategy and Policy for the Richard Dawkins Foundation. An atheist who is a graduate of Notre Dame. I make no comment there, but I will say, uh, keep it right here on Catholic Answers Live. Coming up next, more of your calls on atheism with Dr. Ed Fazer, author of The Last Superstition. You're listening to Catholic Answers Live. 